Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on transmission line theory. On the part 12 series discussion, I have emphasized a special case of a lossless transmission line terminate with a short circuit. For this video, everything is almost the same as the part 12, except that this time round, the lossless transmission line will be terminate with an open circuit. I will do a little bit quick discussion on this open circuit since you can always reference back to the closed circuit one. However, I like to highlight the key difference on the open and the short circuit on the last slides of this video. This will be the part 13 series discussion on transmission line theory. So if you're keen to know more about transmission line theory, Please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on transmission line theory. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much. Let's start the discussion. Like what I mentioned earlier on, for this video, I'm going to concentrate on lossless transmission line terminate with open circuit. Earlier on, I have done a closed circuit. So this and that particular video, okay, you can watch them in order to understand better. For this video, I will go slightly faster in terms of the equation. Earlier on, on the previous few discussion on the transmission line, I have mentioned these two set of equation. And from here, okay, because this reflection coefficient is governed by this equation, and therefore I just want to replace my VO minus with reflection coefficient and then VO plus, as shown over here, so this is VO minus. So basically, they are replaced with reflection coefficient and VO plus. Same for this part here. And then next, I take up the common factor, which is VO plus, and I get this equation and also this set of equation. So these are the two sets of equation that I work on. Next. Okay. Earlier on, I have also derived this. Basically, this is the equation for reflection coefficient. For this time throughout, because it's an open circuit, anything that has an open circuit, the characteristic impedance basically will be infinite. It will be as split as possible. So this is what it means here. So since ZL is infinity, I'm going to replace this ZL with infinity. And therefore, I arrive at this equation. And therefore, I can compute that my reflection coefficient is equal to 1. As for earlier on the short circuit, this reflection coefficient is equal to minus 1. But for this open circuit, this reflection coefficient is equal to 1. Next, this is what I have derived based on a previous set of equation. So now I'm going to replace my this reflection coefficient with 1. So basically what I need to do is I just remove away the reflection coefficient. And I actually obtain this equation, these two set of equation. And again, on my earlier on discussion, okay, I have also showed this mathematical equation. And from here, basically, I just replace this term here okay, with simply these two cosine theta here. So theta means it's beta z. So I just replace them. I actually get these two set of equation. Okay, once I do this, next, what I want to calculate will be the input impedance. Okay, so basically, this is the equation for input impedance in general, okay, which I have derived earlier on, which means that this is, in fact, a general equation to find the impedance okay, at any point. But for this specific, will be on the Z in input impedance based on this equation. And if you still remember early on, because this is an open circuit, I have declared that the ZL, okay, which is the load impedance, is equal to infinity. So over here, this ZL will be infinity. This will be infinity, which is shown over here. 
on the next equation, okay, what I want to do is basically all the term I divide by infinity. Okay, so all divided by infinity, as you can see here. Over here, you can see infinity divided by infinity will be equal to 1. Okay, so any number that divide by infinity, okay, they will be almost like 0. Same for this case here, z not divided by infinity. Okay, so this will be a very, very, very small number, which I can take it as 0. As for here, this infinity and infinity cancel each other. That's how I get this equation. And then if I simplify, okay, so basically this is 1, this 0 I take it away, so basically this is a 1. This 0 I take it away, so basically I arrive at this here. So this is the input impedance for an open circuit terminate at the load side. Okay, so this will be the Z in value. So once I have all this, okay, I'm ready to plot the thing. And again, before I start to further discuss, okay, I urge you guys to support this video by pressing the like, and I also seek your support to subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much. Let's quickly discuss about this open circuit. So basically, this is the VZ that I obtained early on from here. Okay, let me quickly show it to you. So basically, this will be the first case that I will be doing. This will be the second case. And the impedance, this will be my third case. Okay, so I put them all together here. So basically, the first one I'm going to do will be the first case, which is the voltage here. So this is a general equation here. So what I'm going to do is I'm moving this 2 over B naught plus over to the left-hand side, which you get this equation here. So from here, you can see that basically this equation, okay, which is shown over here with this graph. So I'm ready to find the five possible scenario for Z. Z equals to zero. Z equals to minus lambda over four. Z equals to minus lambda over two. Z equals to minus three lambda over four. And last but not least, Z equals to minus lambda. So again, let's start off by doing Z equal to zero. So basically this becomes zero, this cosine zero. Okay, I will actually get one. So therefore at this zero point here, I actually has the term of one. Okay, next. I substitute my z as minus lambda over 4. And therefore, after you compute, you can find that this number is equal to 0. So therefore, this is how I actually obtain the waveform here. Okay, because of time constraint, I may not be able to mention them one by one. But I guess you understand that all this value, when I actually plot, it actually shows this diagram here. Okay, so basically, this will be in terms of voltage. How the voltage change on the transmission line, which I will do a conclusion on the last slides of this video. So again, we can also do for current. Okay, so basically this is the current equation under the second discussion that I want to discuss. Okay, again, all this term here, okay, is over here, and I actually can shift them to the left-hand side. Okay, so basically I can shift them to the left-hand side to get this equation. And again, there will be five scenario. Okay, which I'm going to substitute all the Z term here and I obtain all this value and from here I can quickly plot this waveform here. Okay, so this will be for the current. Next, okay, will be for impedance. Okay, basically the impedance, okay, there is some different but not a bit drastic different over here. So again, this will be the impedance. What I need to do, I shift my J not over. Okay, so therefore, I can start to compute my impedance, okay, which the first one when Z is equal to zero, okay, I have infinity, okay, which is an open circuit, so I have an infinity impedance. So after that, I actually obtain the, the other four case. So I actually managed to plot the waveform for Z in for a lossless transmission line terminate with open circuit. And last but not least, this is what I want to show it to you. Okay, so basically on your left will be short circuit. On your right will be open circuit. As you can see that this is actually short circuit. So this is what I have discussed on my previous video, which is the part 12 series. This will be this video, which is the part 13 series. Why I show it over here? For example, let's say you actually want to obtain, for example, voltage maximum at lambda over 4. Okay, so whether you want it to be short circuit or open circuit, okay, you know that you want to get your maximum voltage 
at lambda over 4. So therefore, you can see from here, this will be the maximum. Okay, when it's actually so-called open circuit, it will be at zero. So therefore, with this conclusion, I will select a short circuit. And when this point here, the length of the transmission line, which is lambda over 4 away to the load, okay, I will have my maximum voltage. So therefore, this is how I choose. On the other hand, let's say okay, I want to have my minimum current, okay, minimum current, okay, let's say the minimum current, okay, let's say over here for this case here at lambda over 2. So in order to have minimum current at lambda over 2 again, okay, I can compare here. So basically lambda over 2, this will be minimum. Lambda over 2 again, it will be 0. So therefore, I choose a short circuit. Okay, when the transmission line is lambda over 2, okay, therefore, I will have my minimum current. So this is voltage, this is current, this is impedance. Same, this will be the voltage, this will be my current, and this will be my impedance. And over here, I guess you know, for example now, okay, I want to get a zero when actually the transmission line is lambda over 4. So from here, I can see that if I want to get an uh, impedance equal to zero at lambda over four, so therefore I trace over here, then I will use an open circuit. Okay, which means that at the other end of the transmission line, it actually terminate with an open circuit. And with the transmission line lambda over four, therefore I will have my impedance as zero ohm. So with this, i like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. And this video, I have discussed two different scenarios when a transmission line is terminate with a short circuit or when a transmission line is terminate with an open circuit. Over here, you can see that they actually behave differently. And over here, you can conclude that whether you want to short circuit at your transmission line or open circuit depend on certain criteria. Depend, for example, whether you want to get maximum voltage at certain range away for example for this case will be lambda over four then i will use a short circuit and when i actually want to get minimum okay which is lambda over two away from the load then i will use an open circuit therefore i will be able to get the minimum voltage at lambda over two so with this i like to end my discussion please sub to like and subscribe once again thank you so much for your time I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.